This year's virtual NFL draft had a lot of talented prospects, and I'm sure many teams felt like they won the draft with the great players that they were able to get. But in today's video, we're going to be talking about the team that I think did a little bit better than every other team and won this draft. Let's get right into it. If you have not already liked this video and subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do it right now. I would greatly appreciate it and it goes a long way in showing your support. But anyways, getting right into the video, I'm sure that many teams felt like they won the draft with the prospects that they got. Many players were able to drop later than they were projected because of all the talent, especially in the early rounds of this year's draft. But in my opinion, the winner easily of this draft was the Miami Dolphins. Now this may seem like the easy or boring answer, but it's just simply true. When you have three first round picks and over 10 picks in the entire draft, you are bound to have a pretty good draft and get a lot of players that you need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each of the 11 draft picks that Miami selected in this year's draft, and I'm going to talk about why each one adds value to their team. So obviously getting into their first pick, number five overall in the first round, Tua Tagovailoa, future quarterback or quarterback of the future for the Miami Dolphins. He's a future superstar in my opinion, and I think that a lot of people forget that before his injury, he was a Heisman contender, and at the beginning of the season, he was the projected number one overall pick. Now obviously that changed, and Joe Burrow was the obvious number one pick and the obvious Heisman winner. But like I said, before his injury, Tua Tagovailoa was definitely that dude who was expected to be the best quarterback in the draft, if not the best player in the draft. So I think that if he can kind of get through this injury, if he cannot be an injury risk in the NFL, I think he is a superstar for sure. And in my opinion, he might have the most potential at the quarterback position. So if he can stay healthy and if the Miami Dolphins can build a system around him, I think that they are in for a treat with Tua Tagovailoa. The Miami Dolphins second pick was Austin Jackson, a tackle out of USC and really the offensive line for the Miami Dolphins was pretty terrible last season and the few guys that they did have they either lost or you know they just need to replace. So Austin Jackson number 18 overall was a great pick for them. They add strength to a weak offensive line. He was one of the best offensive linemen in the draft. Just a great pick overall. They definitely needed it. Moving on. The Miami Dolphins third and final selection in the first round came at the 30th overall pick and it was Noah Igbenogany. If that's how you say it. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. I think I am. But he's a cornerback out of Auburn. And this surprised many people because the Dolphins already actually have a lot of great corners. They have Byron Jones and Xavier Howard are two of the top corners in the NFL but adding depth to the cornerback position especially for a coach like Brian Flores who loves the cornerback position loves defense I don't think that you can have too many good corners and three good corners is not going to be bad for a team so Noah Igbenogany at the 30th overall pick though surprising definitely not a bad pick and just adds depth to their already very good secondary in the second round with the 39th overall pick the Miami Dolphins selected another offensive lineman at the guard position with Robert Hunt from Louisiana and he just adds more strength up front, more protection for Tua once Tua takes over the quarterback position, the starting quarterback position. And I think that these young offensive linemen, these rookie offensive linemen, getting a little bit of development, getting a little bit of experience before Tua is ready to take over that starting position will be huge. And once Tua comes into that starting position, they'll already have some experience. They'll already be able to protect him and it will do loads for him and it will help prevent the injury risk that he is. So Robert Hunt in the second round, I think is another great pick, especially because like I said before, the Miami Dolphins need a lot of help on the offensive line. In round two with the 56th overall pick, the Miami Dolphins selected Raekwon Davis, a defensive tackle from Alabama, and it is uncertain whether or not he will actually play the defensive tackle position in the NFL for the Dolphins, but he is just a great run stopper and he adds strength to the defensive front line. So even if they do move him from that center defensive tackle position, like I said, just a great run stopper, just adds strength to their defensive line, which is solid, but their defensive line does need some help so another good pick another pick that adds a position of need 
and a guy who they can develop into what they want to turn him into. In the third round with the 70th overall pick, the Miami Dolphins selected Brandon Jones, a safety out of Texas, and like I said before, they already have a very strong secondary, especially at the quarterback position, but Brandon Jones at the safety position just adds more depth to that strong secondary, and he's an athlete. He's just speedy, physical. He's a guy that Brian Flores, he's the type of guy that Brian Flores likes to have on his defense, and I think that even if he doesn't get a ton of playing time right away, I definitely think that they could develop him. He'll be a good guy on special teams, and if he does get playing time right away, I'm sure that they could mold him into what they want him to do on the defensive end. In the fourth round, with the 111th overall pick, the Miami Dolphins took Solomon Kinley, a guard out of the University of Georgia. And like I mentioned multiple times, the offensive line for the Miami Dolphins was very, very weak last season, and it has only gotten weaker this offseason. So adding depth to the offensive line, especially with a guy like Solomon Kinley, who's a power run guy, which is kind of, you know, the type of line that the Dolphins want to have. They want to be powerful, big guys up front. I think that this is a great pick. They traded up to get this guy, and even though he is a fourth round pick, so he's not, you know, a star offensive lineman that gets taken in the first round I definitely think he will be very useful for them and because of how weak their offensive line was or kind of still is even though he is the third offensive lineman they took and he t got taken in the fourth round I could definitely see him getting put into a starting position right away so another great pick for the Miami Dolphins in round five with the 154th overall pick Miami Dolphins took Jason Strobridge, a defensive end out of the University of North Carolina. And even though this is another late pick, this is another guy who I think could get some playing time right away, even if he doesn't start, just because Miami was kind of weak at the defensive end position. And I'm sure that they could throw him around and use him kind of in anywhere they want, any type of player they want, they could turn him into. He's just a talented dude. They got him in the fifth round. Like I said, I'm not sure that he'll be a superstar defensive player, but it was a position they needed, so he could definitely have an effect right away. With the 164th pick in the fifth round, the Miami Dolphins were able to pick up Curtis Weaver out of Boise State. He was an outside linebacker, a great pass rusher. He slipped in the draft a lot. Some people had him as high as the first round and they were able to pick him up in the fifth round. And the reason he slipped is just because people are uncertain about his effect or what effect he'll have in the NFL because he isn't the most athletic, explosive guy. You know, when you think of outside linebacker, defensive end, pass rusher type of guys, you think of, you know, Chase Young, elite athlete, huge dude, just strong, powerful speed. This dude is not that, but despite not having all the athletic tools, he led college football in sacks with 34. Yes, that is more than Chase Young, the number two overall pick, and the guy who is considered the best pass rusher in the draft. But, you know, like I said, he dropped because of the questions about his athletic ability. But despite not having that athletic ability or that elite athletic ability, because he is still an athlete, he was able to lead college football in sacks. So I'm sure he will have no problem finding a way to be effective in the NFL. I think that this is a great pickup. In the sixth round, with the 185th overall pick, the Miami Dolphins took Blake Ferguson, a long snapper out of LSU, and drafting a long snapper in the sixth round, you know, it kind of raised some eyebrows. I don't think that this is their best pickup. I'm not saying it's a bad pickup. You know, long snapper is useful. It adds strength for their special teams. Just kind of surprising that it was taken in the sixth round, but, you know, they needed it, or they'll use him, so... I'm not going to complain about this pick. I don't think it was terrible. Just surprising, solid pick, adds strength to the special teams. And with their final selection in the seventh round with the 246 overall pick, the Miami Dolphins took Malcolm Perry, a wide receiver out of Navy. And in my opinion, this is the most value they could have gotten out of a seventh round pick. This is a guy who is a do-it-all type of guy. He played quarterback, running back, and wide receiver in college. You know, he did a little bit of everything. So I'm sure that they can throw him around wherever they want him to play. Even if that is just special teams, I'm sure they will get value out of this guy. And for a seventh round pick, any type of value really is all you can ask for. Like I said, just a solid pickup, a do-it-all type of guy, and I'm sure that whatever they need him to do, he'll be able to do it.
Overall, in my opinion, it's pretty clear that the Miami Dolphins won the NFL Draft, and you might say, yeah, any team with that many picks is bound to win when you have, you know, so many selections. Yeah, sure, that's true, but just because it's obvious doesn't mean that they are not the winners. They added strength to the front lines on offense and defense. I think that was a big focus on this draft. A lot of defensive linemen, a lot of offensive linemen, and in my opinion, they addressed many positions of need. Not all the positions of need, they still have some holes in both their defense and their offense. Specifically, the running back position, many people were surprised they didn't take a running back in this draft, but they did get Jordan Howard this season in free agency, or this offseason in free agency, so he could be their dude for right now. They might be planning on him being the starter for the foreseeable future. So like I said, not all of their positions of need were filled in this draft, but many of them were, and with as many picks as they have, and, is, and with drafting Tua Tagovailoa with the fifth overall pick, I think that kind of won them the draft. So leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Let me know if you think the Miami Dolphins won the NFL draft, what you thought of their picks, or what other team you think had a very good NFL draft. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. I'll see you in my next one.